my name is Amy, if you don't know me already. I'll be doing the Tuesday Truth for today. This is the last in a series called Jesus in Real Life, and uh, we'll be looking through a passage from Luke 18, verse 9 to 14. Okay, so this is a parable about two different groups of people, and we will see what Jesus has to say about them. Okay, cool. Please read along with me. Verse 9. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Okay, so this verse is telling us who this is addressed to. So there were some people in the audience that were confident in or trusted in their own righteousness, their own ability to be good, their own ability to do what is right and not do what is wrong. So essentially not to be sinful. But as a result, these people started to look down on others. Um, they saw them as less than, they despised them, they treated them with contempt or rejected them. So this, this is who Jesus is addressing. So Jesus begins, verse 10. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Okay, so now we're introduced to the two groups of people. If we were in the audience that day, we would have had two very clear pictures of who these characters are, right? So we would have thought the Pharisees. Yeah, this is the good guy, right? He, he is a teacher of the law. You know, he knows his Old Testament. He is wise. He's holy. He has his life together. He has this most wonderful relationship with God. So the Pharisee is the good guy. Then we thought the tax collector. We... Yeah, we always thought this is the bad guy. Like, yeah, he, the, the tax collectors were really hated by people. But essentially what they would do is they would tax the Jewish people on exorbitant amounts. Um, yeah, and the Jewish people were already under the oppression of the Roman government. So these tax collectors would get wealthy off the backs of their own people. So yeah, they, they were seen as traitors. They were seen as scum, wicked, evil people, like unredeemable evil people. So we would have thought, Pharisee is the good guy, the tax collector is the bad guy. So that's what we would have thought. Okay, let's read um, 11 and 12, verse 11 and 12. Okay, the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. So this tax collector, um, this Pharisee, is essentially saying, He's thanking God that he's righteous, that he's a good guy, and that he's not like other people who are sinful and unrighteous, essentially. So he's thanking God that he's better than other people. So it's kind of this weird, boastful, egocentric prayer, but it also gives us an understanding of what's actually going on in this Pharisee's head, because he gives reasons for why he thinks he's good. He says, I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of what I get, so I pay my tithes. Right, so, so what he's thinking is, my good works make me righteous. Um, they make me right with God and they make me better than others. Essentially what he's doing is he's putting his worth in his good works. That's what he's doing. But we can have a look at the tax collector's prayer. Okay, cool. Verse 13. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Immediately, we can see a difference in posture and attitude. He, he stood at a distance. He wouldn't even come close. He would not lift his eyes up. I, I don't know if you've ever been there where you're so humbled or you feel so unworthy or even ashamed that you literally don't even want to show your face. You don't want to lift your eyes. And it also says that he beat his breast. Um, this was a sign of sorrow and mourning and repentance. Um, and all he says is, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. It's such a short prayer, but it's so jam-packed. Um, he, he, he's firstly he's acknowledging, uh, I'm not righteous. I'm not good. I am a contributor to the evil in this world, and I need mercy. I can't fix this myself. So that's why he asks God, have mercy on me. But mercy is it's actually a really beautiful concept. Um, it essentially means compassion on an enemy. You know, undeserved compassion, but it can also mean to make atonement for, right? Atonement literally means to cover over someone's debt. So imagine I did something wrong and a judge fined me two million rand. Now, this debt is way too big. There's no way I'm paying for it. So I would be atoned for if someone else paid that two million rand in my place so that I would be right with the law 
and that I would be set free. So that's what it would be like if I was atoned for. So these are the two different prayers of the Pharisee and the tax collector. And let's see what Jesus has to say about it. Verse 14. I tell you that this man, meaning the tax collector, rather than the other, meaning the Pharisee, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Now this would have blown the audience's mind. Like, remember they thought the Pharisee is the good guy and the tax collector is the bad guy. <laughs> what Jesus is saying here is the tax collector, rather than the Pharisee, went home justified, vindicated, and declared righteous. Um, this is crazy because Jesus is declaring the bad guy righteous. And he goes on to say that those who exalt themselves will be humbled. So those who try and lift themselves up, elevate themselves, try and save themselves, will be humbled or brought low or shown that they are in need. And those who humble themselves will be exalted, that those who come in humility, knowing that they need saving, knowing that they need mercy and compassion um, and love, will be exalted. Now, now that's the parable, but maybe you're asking, like, what does this have to do with me? Or, or does this apply to me? And I would say, like, yeah, no, definitely it does. Um, if I look back on my life, I have most certainly behaved like a Pharisee and behaved like a tax collector. And I remember growing up, I believed like a Pharisee that I had to put my worth in my good works. So that's what I thought was what we did. Um, you know, I thought if you do good works, then you're loved and then you go to heaven. And if you do bad things, well, then you're not loved and then you go to hell, but you don't want to go to hell. So you need to justify yourself, do better, um, work harder, pay off your own debt. That, that's what I thought it was. And the irony was this left me feeling so empty, you know, and without freedom. And the bigger irony is that my sin deepened, you know, as I got older, um, yeah, I started to do more things that I was ashamed of and I developed sinful habits and sinful addictions and I felt that I had to hide all these things and I had to hide myself, like my true self, what was really going on. And I felt that I started to live this duplicitous life, you know, I would project this image of this Pharisee, this Pharisee facade. Um, I'd be like, no, everything's good, you know, my life's fine, I'm not broken, don't stress, you know, but actually behind closed doors, I was just like a tax collector. I was wicked. Um, yeah, and I often thought I was unredeemable. But throughout the process of my salvation, God had to deal with the Pharisee in me and the tax collector. And he started to break the Pharisee facade because he started to show me, like, how sinful I actually was, you know, and how no matter how hard I tried, I actually couldn't fix it, you know. And he showed me how proud I was, you know. I thought I could save myself. And I even thought that I could save others, you know? So he had to humble me and he did, he humbled me. And I finally realized that I needed him and I needed him to lead my life because if I was gonna lead my life, I was gonna lead my life into the ground. So God had to deal with the Pharisee and then God had to deal with the tax collector. So that part was the, the part of me that I, that I hid. You know, those secrets that I promised myself, I'm going to take this to my grave. Yeah, God had to break through that Pharisee facade um, and coax the real me um, forward. <laughs> and uh, Jesus persuaded me to share my story. I was in grade 10 and he persuaded me to share my story with two youth leaders. And I did. It was so difficult. But for the first time, I understood that I was forgiven. And that I was no longer going to be punished or no longer condemned. Um, and I started to understand the meaning of mercy. Because here was me. I didn't deserve compassion. <laughs> you know? Um, I deserved hell. <laughs> I was sinful, unrighteous, and unclean. Just like the rest of humanity. And here's Jesus. He's perfect and righteous in every way. And here's the mercy. Jesus atoned for my sins and covered my debt by taking my place. 
he bore my punishment. He took every drop of wrath for my sins, past, present, and future. And then he died and he rose again because, because of this, I am now declared righteous. The tax collector is declared righteous. Um, and the first time I ever heard that I was a new creation, I promise you it changed my life. It, it changed my life completely. I didn't know that because of Christ, I could be declared righteous and new creation. But don't get me wrong, <laughs> no matter how long you've been a Christian, yeah, you're never gonna outgrow the gospel. <laughs> uh, I still regularly have to come to Jesus and uh, yeah, I have to come to him as a tax collector or as a Pharisee and ask him for mercy. Um, but if you're a Pharisee, I just want to encourage you today to go to Jesus and to ask him to, to show you your heart, what's really going on in your life, what, what's your brokenness. I know this is scary, but God actually wants to save you from the slavery of putting your worth in good works. <laughs> he wants to save you from that. And if you're a tax collector, you are not too far gone. There is nothing that you have done that is so big that it is bigger than the grace of God through Christ Jesus. And um, like, if we just look at the track record of people in scripture, like Noah drank too much, <laughs> Jacob was a liar, Moses was a murderer, Rahab was a prostitute, David was an adulterer and a murderer, Mary Magdalene was possessed by seven demons, and Matthew was a tax collector, and Paul was a Pharisee. So my encouragement to you is to go to God, to honestly share with him what's going on in your heart and with sincerity to ask him, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Because I promise you, if you ask him what he has to say to you and you hear his voice, it will change your life. It will blow your mind. Cool. <laughs> Thanks everyone for listening. Cheers.